G'day guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be hooking up my iPad now to my Rapsoda MLM2 Pro and GS Pro. There has been an update on Rowan's connector. We can now use our iPad. I'm still struggling with my Android device getting it connected, and that's to do with the actual screencast, the EasyCast application. However, I've got my iPhone working, and now today I'm gonna to show you how to get your iPad working. So I'm gonna be updating my connector that Rowan has made to the version two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen and then we'll get into it. All right, so I've got my screen shared now, and what you wanna do is you wanna to navigate to the link in the description, and you're gonna to come to this page. Now you're gonna see version 2.0. That's the latest version. So we can click on that, and that's gonna take us to version 2.0. This is the download. So you're gonna click on this download here. While that's downloading, Rowan has actually made a video on his YouTube channel on how to get this connected. If you wanna watch that, just click on the, on the little link there. Okay, that has now downloaded. So I'm gonna open that file and you're gonna be met with this folder here. Now this is zipped, so we're gonna to have to extract this. So double click on it. And then we're gonna double click on this application. And it's gonna say this application may depend on uh, other compressed files within the folder. Um, do you want to extract basically? Just go extract all. And then it's going to get you to where you want to actually save this folder. So for me, I am just going to put this on the desktop. And I'll select desktop there. And that's just going to be easy for me to find. Uh, and then I'm going to go extract. Okay, let it do its thing. And then once it's done, it will pop up and um, I should be able to navigate to the desktop, and then I've got MLM 2 Pro connector version 2.0. Now, what I can do is I'll minimize this, and I'll minimize, I can actually close out of this other one now. Um, this was the one that was uh, zipped up, so we can cross out of that. And as you can see now, because I did it to my desktop, I can find that folder really easy just by simply clicking on the folder on my desktop and then you've got the version uh, connector 2.0. Okay, so we do have the settings.json file. So let's open that up and let's have a look. We'll open it in Notepad, and then we can have a look. So it says all of the information, window, we're gonna be using AirPlay because we're using uh, iPhone or iOS. So for the target width and height, I've got 1597, and so that is correct for the iPad, and then 1198, which is correct for the iPad. So if you have an iPhone, either use the version one connector or um, you can simply edit these metrics to say 1638 for the width and 752 for the height. It is set up for iPad, so we can just leave it as it is. We'll cross out of that. And now we're simply going to share our screen to the AirPlay application. If you haven't got this, you can get this from the App Store. There is a free trial. I'm still currently on the free trial, um, but I will be purchasing this through the Microsoft App Store as soon as it says I can no longer use the free trial. If you're trying to find the EasyCast application, jump on to Google and just type EasyCast Windows, and then it'll pop up and you can actually find it through the Microsoft Store that way. If you go into the Microsoft Store, I've had people saying they can't find it. So just use Google um, and just get the Microsoft application that way. Okay, once we've done that, I'm gonna grab my iPad. All right, so I've got my iPad. Now I'm going to screen mirror my iPad to my computer. To do that, I'm using the AirPlay application, like I said, you can find this on the App Store. Like the instructions say, uh, please make sure your devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi. That is very important your iPad or your phone have got to be connected to the same Wi-Fi that your laptop or PC is using. Once they are, all you do is scroll down from the top right-hand corner, click on the two little rectangles, as you can see on the screen there. It'll pop up with devices you can screen mirror to and simply select your PC AirPlay. Now my screen is being mirrored from my iPad to my PC or my laptop. Okay, now that that has happened, what I'm gonna do is launch the uh, Rapsodo application and I'm gonna to connect to my launch monitor. But first what I'll do is I'll just shrink this screen down. So I'll go up to the top of the screen and click on these two arrows. And you can see that that then changes the size of the actual window. And to, to change it, we're gonna to have to adjust this later, but you can drag this out um, and make it as big as you want. 
Okay, from there, I'll connect up to my MLM2 Pro and then head to the range on my iPad. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect through my Wi-Fi network. And like I said, I found for me personally, using a hotspot from my phone, it's just stable. So that's what I'm currently doing. Yes, it is gonna chew through my mobile data, but um, hopefully in the future, there will be updates from Rapsodo to where I don't get disconnects. I still get disconnects, so I'm just having to do it this way. Okay, we are at the Rapsodo range. We'll go net, Callaway RPT ball, sea level, graphics high. Okay, now you can see that the image has now changed size. So we're gonna go and we're gonna resize this. And what you wanna do is you wanna resize this to where it gets rid of all the black borders. Um, and then we'll leave it just there at, uh, on the screen. Doesn't really matter what iron you select. If you do want to keep all your stats in your data, then you can change the um, you can change the club as required while you're hitting. But for me, I don't really care. I just leave it as is. All my stats and stuff will get saved within the GS Pro application. Okay, from there. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to open GS Pro. So let's open GS Pro now. Okay, once GS Pro is open. Um, I will actually show this as well. So this is currently set up for my uh, Foresight GC2. So this is the simple um, API. So this is how you connect your GC2. If you've got your configuration in a different configuration, all you have to do is clear device settings and exit, and that'll close your connector. And then just go settings, navigate to game, and you wanna reset GS Pro Connect. Just wait for a little bit it'll pop up and what we want for the Rapsoda is the open API. So we'll select that and then the correct window will pop up. Okay, from there, navigate to the practice range. And what I will do as well is I'll just hit F11 and that'll make it a windowed view. Um, and then I can shrink this down so we can see exactly what we're doing. Okay, so we'll move that over to the side. And now we've got a few different windows open, but I just wanna make this clear for everybody and I'll just get this one as well. Okay, now that we've got all these windows open, what we're gonna do is open the MLM2 Pro Connector version two. So right click, run as administrator. Um, you'll get this pop up, just go more information and go run anyway. Yes. Okay, and then we'll wait for the little uh, message to pop up. Okay, and it says, press enter after you've hit your first shot. So we'll get a club and we'll hit our first shot. And for the purpose of this, it doesn't really matter. You can just hit an, any shot, it doesn't matter. Okay, we've hit that shot. We've got data on the screen coming through, which is good. And then we're just gonna hit enter. Okay, and then from there, it pops up with this new screen that we haven't seen before. So with version one, this screen didn't exist. So we will scroll over and it looks like the information here, we'll just make this big. Okay, once you've made that a bit bigger so you can see it, on the connector itself, it says, please select the region of interest. Okay, the connector just closed, so we'll open that again. We'll just open it, right click, run as administrator. Yes, we'll approve it. We might need to hit another shot, we'll see how we go. Uh, we have hit a shot, so let's just push enter, make this big again. And it says, please select the ROI or the region of interest for ball speed. So we're gonna come over to this new screen. I will make this a bit bigger so you can see. And where it says ball speed, you want to select the top left-hand side and then scroll over to the bottom right-hand side and click, and then that's set. Okay, now it says select the ROI, the region of interest for spin rate. So we're gonna do the same thing for spin rate. Um, I'm just gonna keep this window small now, but do the exact same thing for spin rate. And then it says the region of interest for spin axis. So the spin axis is just there. And now it says the region of interest for launch direction, your um, VLA. So it wants VLA, not horizontal. It says region of interest for launch direction, VLA. So let's go to vertical launch angle. Okay, that's our vertical launch angle. And then it says select the region of interest for launch angle, horizontal launch angle. Cool, so we will do that. And now it wants the region of interest for club speed. So we'll go over to club speed. We've done that. 
Okay, now it says uh, your shot data has been sent successfully and everything should work. So what we'll do now is we'll minimize this airplay window, we'll minimize the connector, and we'll minimize the open API. And what we'll do is we'll go back to GS Pro and we'll push F11 to make it full screen. Okay, now I'm just gonna hit a shot and see if that works. We'll hit a shot. And it did work on the iPad, but it doesn't seem to have gone into the GS Pro world. So we'll have a quick look. It might not be getting sent through to GS Pro's own API. It doesn't look like it has. So what we might need to do is reset, reset that. So I'll hit another shot. Okay, so it's fed the information into the MLM2 Pro's connector, but the information's not coming up in GS Pro's connector. So what we're gonna do is we'll do a bit of troubleshooting um, as we go. We'll go into the settings and we're just gonna go to game and we're just gonna reset GS Pro Connect and we'll just wait for it to pop up again. Cool, that's reset. We'll go save and now let's see if this works, we do have a red line, so we might potentially need to restart the connector again. Okay, the good news is the information is going to the iPad. It's just not getting fed through to GS Pro. So we'll have a look at that. Did it go through to the connector? No. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna close out of this V2 connector. And we will open this once more run as administrator, and we've hit our first shot, enter, and we'll just step through this again. Okay, we have our shot there, and that seems to have worked. So, let's try hit another shot. Okay, right, it's working, but the horizontal launch angle it's definitely coming off a bit odd uh, in the GS Pro world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go back and have a look at this. So it's saying horizontal launch angle is 25.4, which let's just have a look at what it's saying in here. HLA 25.4. So potentially I clipped the window for the horizontal launch angle. So I will set it up one more time. That was a really nice shot. All the information's there. We'll hit enter. Okay, step through this one more time, ball speed. Okay, I think I know what the issue is. I think in the code, he's actually flipped HLA and VLA. So that's what's going on, I think. So I'll bomb out of this real quick because what I think's happened is he said launch direction, but then he's put VLA instead of HLA. So that's what's... That's what's going wrong here. So um, region of interest for launch direction, but then it says VLA. So I was using VLA when that should actually say HLA, and then the launch angle should say VLA. So those are flipped back to front, and that's why we're getting such an odd ball flight. So let me flip those, and then we will hit some shots. And now this is where you've got to be careful. So region of interest, for launch direction. So even though it says VLA, it's actually HLA. So we want this one here, launch direction, and then region of interest for launch angle is this one. So that's our VLA. Okay, that should be good. And we have a shot. All the data's been sent through. Okay, let's hit a couple of shots. So this should all be set up now. Beautiful, and it works. So that's fantastic. There was just the issue I had with the HLA and VLA. I'll definitely let uh, Rowan know that he just needs to edit that code just to say VLA, HLA in the different spots. Apart from that, everything works. It works fantastically. I'm gonna be doing a lot more testing with this. I'm so happy we have an iPad connection now. If you guys enjoyed that, let me know. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.